um, borrowed a lens from somebody and I got to see it. It was huge. Are you still borrowing that mm-hmm. or? Okay. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it's a crazy, crazy telephoto lens. It's like a $10,000 lens. It's a, uh, one of my, um, buddies who has crazy. actually it's retired. Yeah. Crazy well, that's, that's, cost a, that much. that's a, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a far end of it. Um, you know, your average lens won't, but I mean, like my, good lenses I shoot with most of the time, or, I mean, my main one, um, for landscape photography is about $2,000, $2,200. but yeah, this is, it is a lens designed for taking photos for like professional athlete photographers, crazy wildlife photographers, stuff where, you know, you'll sit in one end zone and then, um, you'll, get a Super Bowl diving catch in the other end zone and you'll be zoomed in on the guy's face because you have that kind of a lens. That's, that's a sort of equipment. I mean, that lens weighs like, I mean, I don't know, 20 pounds. I mean, it's just insane. You know, when you set on a tripod, the lens bounces on the tripod and then on the backside is this camera. It's not like the cameras attached to the tripod because it would snap off because of the weight of the lens. Right. I mean, that's that's how crazy the lens is. But yeah, the lenses are the lenses actually make photos. Um, a lot of people think it's the quality of the camera, and it is to a certain extent. But really, at the end of the day, it's more advantageous for somebody to invest their money in the actual lenses because the lens technology really doesn't advance much anymore. And so they retain their value and any new cameras that come out, those lenses can, will be used on those, on those new cameras and, uh, and a a camera body, you know, it may only have 150, 250, 500,000 shutters speed or shutter uh, um, measurements on it. So like at some point when that shutter goes out, the camera is done and you can pay to get it fixed, but realistically it costs about the same to buy a new camera. You know, so if you're, you know, my, my main camera that I shoot with the body is probably three twenty five hundred dollars something like that. Wait, when so that your camera DSLR dies, camera, it can die. It only has so many clicks and then yeah, it's they done. Will. They, they, yes, absolutely. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Whoa. I don't know and, if people know I mean, that. You're, I feel like you're talking about that. They, they don't, but that's a, that's definitely a thing. Um, the, so like, we'll talk about shutter speed. So shutter speed and aperture are two opposing forces and you sacrifice one to gain the other. So if it's okay, what is shutter speed and what is aperture? I don't, I'm not really familiar. Well, shutter you're good. So aperture is the size of the hole that the light comes through to come into your camera body to capture the photo. The larger that hole is, the more light can get in. It's just like if you're squinting your eyes, um, it, less light comes into your eyeballs, right? If they're wide open, more light comes in. Like if you're thinking about the sun, like you're really squinty when you're driving into the sun, it's because you don't right. want all that light being into your eyes because it's it hurts to look at, you know? the camera is the exact same thing. So the larger the hole, AKA the aperture, um, the more light gets in. Aperture goes, the larger the number for aperture, the smaller the aperture. It's very counterintuitive. So F22 um, is in most like lenses, your, your smallest aperture but it creates more depth of field when it's, when it's a, a, a smaller aperture. So like your F, you know, four is pretty typical for lens or 2.6, but like those are really big apertures. I mean, they're like this as opposed to like a little pinhole that lights coming through, but what you, so my whole point was that as you get one, you sacrifice the other. Um, so like in a low light situation, you may need a very large aperture to just get the camera shutter speed, which was your original question, quick enough that it stops movement. Because if it doesn't shut fast enough, then then it'll just be a blur. Like say there's a deer walking across a field in front of me, it'll just be a blur because the camera, the shutter speed might have been four or five seconds long and it's just exposing for that whole four or five seconds. 
but you know if i want to capture that deer i'm pretty much might as well i mean never anything less than 180th of a second and probably more likely one two fiftieth of a second so my point was with the camera and the lifespan because that was the original question i'm going on a crazy tangent here but like the no, the no. lifespan of the camera um you know if you're a wildlife photographer and you're taking bird photos and you're just going click 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 which is what i do when i chase sandhill cranes then you you're doing really really fast shutter speeds and it's nothing in one flock of birds flying over to take 40 photos you know so that's 40 shutter speeds or 40 shutters that you'll never get back in your camera's life but if i'm taking like a photo of the waterfalls i'm telling you about well that typically if you're trying to um really um create a movement feel with that water like time dilation sort of thing i mean there's times my camera will expose for 30 seconds a minute and it's i press the button it's on a timer so i don't touch the camera so i don't accidentally bump the camera as i'm letting go depressing on the the yep. shutter um and and then i just step back and i let it expose on the tripod watching the stream water flow and it creates a really cool effect and it might expose for a whole minute you know and uh, that's you know that's kind of just like a real quick rundown of like aperture versus shutter speed for people um there's also uh iso which is like the amount of pixels that come into your camera and that's another way to combat like i need to get a quicker shutter speed um in this really low light situation to be able to capture something but you lose quality you know typically your your iso is about 100 um but it goes all the way up to like 6400 but it'll be so pixelated at that really high end that although it stops the movement you lose tons of image quality and it's always this trade-off with photography it is always okay. this trade-off so uh, i like that that's kind of fascinating but okay so it sounds i thought i heard you say more pixels is bad it'll be too no. pixelated or is it it's it's fewer pixels so fewer um, pixels is know, bad that makes sense yeah yeah okay yeah yeah i mean for as far as image quality goes but if your goal is to stop movement like your cell phones they always brag about being able to take pictures in low light really all they're doing is turning up the iso in your your camera and i mean honestly cell phone technology camera technology is pretty darn good compared to what it used to be um but what the average person doesn't understand is all they're doing is you're losing image quality and lower light to be able to create a better photo. If you take a photo on your, your um, iPhone, you know, and then you blow it up big, like that photo behind me there, um, you're going to lose the quality because it was not taken with a camera that got in that much data into the file. Uh, especially in low light. And that's what people don't understand. They think they're going to blow up these pictures they take on their phones to be like a canvas that's two feet by three feet behind me, but you'll lose quality and it will not look good. And that's the difference between like a professional camera and like something that you're carrying around in your pocket. Is low light like a semi-dark room? It's night outside. What is low light? Yeah, either. I mean, okay, so okay. say that... Okay, first of all, a good thing to say is that, I mean, it seems common sense, but outside is, even on a cloudy day, way brighter than the inside of your house with all your lights on. So okay. your camera has a light meter on it that it measures the light coming into the light meter, and that's how it dictates what it needs to do to expose correctly. Because if it underexposes, aka is an op the shutter isn't open long enough, then it will be really dark, you know, like a really dark photo. Or if it overexposes, it'll be look washed out. It'll be all way too, way too bright, you know, inside of a house. Like if you're, okay, let's not even talk about house. Let's talk about a volleyball game, like Nebraska volleyball game. You know, you're indoors, you're in a Coliseum with like neon lighting or whatever kind of fluorescent is what I mean. Fluorescent lighting, not neon, but like that's a low light situation as far as your camera is concerned. Um, you can combat that with a flash, you know, like a camera flash, which creates a lot brighter thing okay. that you're reflecting off of. I have a flash. I'm taking a picture of you, Trev. Yeah, that light bounces off you, your body, and it comes right back into the camera. Okay, we're live. Okay, so I don't know. We apparently had some uh, video, audio 
difficulties there for a second. I, I don't know. I think that um, they probably got the understanding of what low light means. I was just going on pretty detailed explanation of it. We all know what low light means, I guess. So I suppose we'll just move on. But Yeah. But yeah, Trev. Uh, I'm really into low light. And so, yeah. Dude, um, sorry about that. This is just a beginner podcaster here. Don't really know what's going on, so you'll have to forgive yeah, me. I've been, it could have been my internet. My internet sucks, I feel like. Um, it was probably me. 